OneFootball allows you to stay on top of latest transfer information and team news with personalised content. Gain access to football news schedules and results in over 100 leagues to track your favourite clubs and track live play performance scores and stats in unraveled detail during match days. Also gain a front row seat to match day action and videos from your favourite teams. So access everything football by downloading the OneFootball app now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Hello FPL managers, today we've got part 3 of the promoted teams analysis where we have a look at Brentford's squad. In today's video we take a look at 10 potential Brentford FPL assets and have a look at how they got on in last season's EFL Championship. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to show support for the channel and also click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Click the join button down below if you guys want to become a channel member to access behind the scenes content and get a personalised shout out when you become a member and also get access to badges and super stickers when we live stream. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So starting off with the Brentford goalkeepers beginning with David Raya. He is coming in at £4.5 million which is fairly a decent price for him as in his 42 appearances for Brentford last season he got himself 18 clean sheets. Brentford have one of the more favourable starts out of the three promoted sides so it could be worthwhile jumping on their defenders if you want to cash in on some clean sheets. I think Raya at £4.5 million is decent value in goalkeeper and could be better value than some of the other EFL goalkeepers. Having a look at Raya's counterpart it is Ellery Balcom who didn't play a single game in the EFL EFL Championship last season, but he will be the backup keeper for Brentford this season in the Premier League. So at £4 million, there is potential that he may play a couple of games throughout the season, but he is definitely not nailed on to start as the starting keeper, so if you do want to have a solid backup keeper at £4 million, then he could be a good option. Moving on to the Brentford defenders, starting off with Ethan Pinnock. He is coming in at £4.5 million, which is a fairly decent price for him, as in his 39 matches, he got himself one goal and one assist. His attacking potential was highlighted through 0.7 shots per game and 0.3 key passes per game, which is fairly decent for a defender. He also does average one tackle and one interception per game, which does increase the likelihood of him getting bonus points if Brentford can get themselves a clean sheet. So at £4.5 million, he does have one of the highest attacking returns for any Brentford defender, so he could be good value. Moving on to Pontus Janssen, he does have one of the highest ownerships out of the Brentford defenders and is coming in at £4.5 million. He only played 24 matches in the EFL last season but couldn't manage a single goal or assist. He does seem to play the furthest back defensive role which doesn't allow him to get forward from corners and get that many header opportunities. Also he isn't really involved in open play and is not really playing that many passes forward so he's probably not the best value for his price tag. But moving on to the third Brentford defender at £4.5 million it is Rico Henry. He played 30 matches last season for one goal and two assists as he has the highest attacking output out of any Brentford defender. This is obviously very impressive for a defender as he is creating a fair few opportunities for his teammates and he could be a good value option to start the season. Defensively, he averages 1.3 tackles and 1 interception per game, which is fairly solid, so he definitely could be on bonus points if Brentford get the clean sheets. Overall, out of these three defensive options, I think Rico Henry could be the best value as he does provide that most attacking potential. Now moving on to the Brentford midfielders, starting off with Brian Mbwemo. Mbwemo is coming in at a very nice price of £5.5 million, and so does seem to be very good value in the middle of the park. In his 44 EFL matches, he got himself a very impressive 8 goals and 10 assists. He was tied leading assist getter with Ivan Toni and he was very impressive up top working together with him. Mabuemo averaged 1.5 shots per game and 1.3 key passes per game, which is very good considering that he is only 5.5 million. I think that with the amount of creativity that Mabuemo is providing in the middle of the park, then he could be very valuable as a midfielder in FPL. I think with the amount of creativity that he is providing for his teammates, he could be very good value in the middle of the park, especially for his cheap price tag. Moving on to Sergi Carnos, he is coming in at £5.5 million and in his 46 EFL matches he got himself 9 goals and 8 assists. His offensive output was highlighted through his very impressive 2.1 shots per game which is one of the highest in the Brentford team. He also averages 1.2 key passes per game which is about the same as Mbwemo so I think at the same price tag and a very low ownership compared to him that he could be a good differential option. The Brentford midfield does seem to be very creative in providing chances for their strike partners so I think if you do want to go for a midfield at 5.5 million then Kanyos could be the best value and a differential option. And moving on to the third and final Brentford midfielder, it is Jensen. In Jensen's 45 EFL matches, he got himself 2 goals and 7 assists, and these 7 assists did make him the 4th highest assist getter for Brentford. 
Jensen is half a million pounds cheaper than his Brentford teammates in the middle of the park, and he did have a fairly solid attacking output, but he averages 0.9 shots per game and a very impressive 1.5 key passes per game, which is the second highest in the Brentford team. I think if you are looking for even more value in the Brentford midfield, then Jensen at the cheapest price there at 5 million could be a good option. Now moving on to the Brentford forwards, starting off with Ivan Tony. He does seem to be the pick of the bunch in terms of Brentford FPL assets, as he was the top scorer in the EFL last year with a whopping 31 goals in 45 matches. This was also accompanied with 10 assists, which is very impressive, and he did average 3 shots per game and 1.1 key passes per game, so he is definitely the main attacking output for Brentford. Especially with Brentford's decent starting fixtures, you would expect him to make a good start to the season, so I think at 6.5 million he is very good value for his good attacking output. And moving on to Ivan Tony's strike partner, it is Force. Marcus Force got himself 7 goals and 1 assist in 39 matches last season, but he only made himself 10 starting appearances. He does seem to be the super sub option for Brentford, so he is probably not worthwhile going for. He did average 0.9 shots per game, which is fairly decent, but he only averaged 0.2 key passes per game. So at 5.5 million, he's probably not the best value, and if I was to go for a Brentford forward, it would be Ivan Tony. So that's all we've got for today for part 3 of the Promoter Teams Analysis, where we had a look at Brentford's squad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel, and also click the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Also, don't forget to click the join button down below if you guys want to access behind the scenes content and get badges when we live stream. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.